What's up, guys? It's the Michael. I'm here in 1907, and today I'm reviewing Walking Dead season two finale. No going back. Now, as you see my last few videos, I've been giving it a lot of praise. I did love the last season. I love this season so far, and no going back because a lot of expectations because a lot of people said that the viewers was a disappointment, and this game has a lot to live up to. So, does it live up to anything? Does it um, reach its expectations? Is it below it, or is it beyond it? In my opinion, I'm going to say right now that it's beyond it. No going back goes beyond its expectations and makes a game that, in my opinion, is a perfect masterpiece in every single way. Want to know why? Well, let's talk about it. So, what does um, they get right? Let's just say everything first. Let's go, before I even go to anything, I might say that there may be some spoilers to the last four episodes. So, if you have not played the last four episodes, please don't watch this video. If, when, if you do play the last four episodes, then watch this video. So, let's get into it. The story takes place like a few seconds after the events of Amid the Ruins, when a Clementine group, or what's left of them, basically get encountered by Arvel, a Russian, who you encounter in the fourth episode, who you take his medicine or you don't from, and his Russian group of guys, they basically encounter you, and they say to steal your stuff. Unfortunately, your group does not want to, and end up, and you end up shooting Rebecca because she turns to a walker, or you don't shoot her, and someone else does. Anyways, I ruined the last five minutes. Sorry, but of the last episode, not episode five. But episode five starts off with a bang. Really, it starts off intensifying with a shootout, and Clemson has to make few decisions on what to do during that shootout, which is amazingly well done. Telltale's made basically a great game altogether. Now. Like I say, the game moves at a great pace. The pacing really moves on quickly. But even though it's moving quickly, the game never feels too short. In other games like Wolf Among Us, like episode 4, I always see how the game was short and it was disappointing because it never fulfilled its full promise as in, it didn't, it didn't feel, I didn't feel like, because it was short, it didn't earn its full potential. Like Cry Wolf, a lot of people called it a short episode. It was so worth it because it gave you so much to do in that episode. There was a lot of momentum. And the best pacing in here is amazing, actually. It basically, the game actually almost took me two hours to complete, which is like a long time. And a lot of my Telltale game uh, playthroughs. So this was a really long playthrough, in my opinion. That was amazing to see that. So when it comes to storytelling here, they really did uh, rise the ante, like raise the level of stakes in this episode. And really, this episode really does show who Clem's friends are and who is Clementine as a person. Like, who did you, like, as a player, who did you define her as? In my opinion, I define Clementine as someone who isn't dumb, who really knows what's going on. She's smart and she's also, she's not manipulative, but she's calculating. She knows what's the, what to do in the situation. And she has to do something that only, like, she can do as a person. And if you don't listen to her, anyways. But... In my Clementine, she became a person that I really did love as a character. I didn't create a Clementine that I hated because if I did, I wouldn't like the game that much. But the game really does allow you to make your own choices. As in, episode 5 really does give you the no illusion of choices. As in other games, they would try to give you choice, but it was always an illusion. Like, you really weren't given, like, your own freedom. But in this game, you give your own freedom. As in, there's, like, multiple ways to really continue a story. And I love that how this game has this path that the story goes to, but the way that path can spread out and make its own story is amazing. And there's multiple ways to go to every single situation. And I really do love that about this game, as in my original playthrough, which I didn't put up online on YouTube, I made um, I made choices that I didn't really like, and I didn't really release them. And then I basically redid the, the playthrough of The Walking Dead Season 5, episode 5, maybe. And I basically released it online. And what happened was I really did love that ending more because I really did connect to it. The game can also be connected to characters or don't. As in my opinion, this game really is all about breaking points. What is the breaking point of a human being? Uh, I actually wrote this down on a few notes uh, a few days ago. Um, when, when a human being is pushed to the limits, they show their true colors. And I really do love that as in this game. This, this shows... Throughout the episode, this shows all the characters who survived with you. Who are their? What are their true colors? Are they a good person? 
Are they a bad person? Would they side against you in the team? Or would they go with you in the team on these dark choices that you have to make? And I really do love that as this game throws you some hard stringing, hard stringing choices that will go to your heart straight. As these choices have multiple consequences behind each one, which is amazing. I love that about this game. Is there's multiple ways to really uh, play the game, and I love that about this game in general. So that was good for me as I really did a connected experience a lot more. As for story, it also ends on a satisfying ending, which is great. As in this game, like I said, has five multiple en like five endings in this game basically. Are who, what happens in the last few moments of the episode, like the last ten minutes, it can change like five endings based on what you say or what you do throughout those moments. And I love that as one of the endings, the one I put online, really did actually make me cry. And it's really hard for for me to cry when it comes to gaming or films, and really to pull on my heartstrings so they make me cry. And this game makes me cry really well. It's amazing how. They really do release this game, and it really does pull your heartstrings the best way possible. And I really do love that about this game overall, so it's amazing how they did it. Um, when it comes to gameplay, there's not that much gameplay actually. It's mostly just like you're talking most of the game. Talking, talking, talking. That's all you're really doing in the game. And the rest of the time, you're basically, most of the time, you're basically just tapping face buttons. Face buttons, which I played on PS3. A square, triangle, X, and circle, where I made choices and I had to live with the consequences. And these choices really do develop these characters. As this game feels falls to set up on episode four, amid the wounds where we learn about these characters and we learn that if Clementine could really survive in this world or she has to be swallowed in its own nature. That's what I've done in episode four. And episode four uh, um, continues on the setup with episode five. Where you basically learn more about these characters and you find out what are they really are, are these people your friends or just really your enemies from the beginning and it really does um, show that throughout the entire game which is amazing how they do it. Um, when it comes to performances, the game is amazing when it's outstanding voice acting and it's even better um, writing. I always said that the writing in this series has always been exceptionally a perfect, pitch perfect. They know how to write their games. Kyoto get some of the best writers in my opinion to really write these stories because if they didn't these games wouldn't work at all and their writing here is so damn good at times it makes me want to replay the game all over again just to see what would happen if I said that choice and I love that about games is how they can really cool make you say play me again so you can find the other way how the other game ends and I really do love that about this game all together it really does allow you to replay the game and you get an entirely different experience based on what choices you made in the last few episodes. Hell, what I wanted to do after playing this season was really replay the first season and then this one over so I can get more than just a 10 hour experience but a 20 hour experience. Which is amazing how they did that for this season. Because if you played both season 1 and season 2, it's like a long journey altogether. And the music here is good, it's amazing, like when the action sequence comes, the sound, like the music, like, dun, 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 like it intensifies, and the tone really does set up really dark story. And Clementine really here shows as a growth as a character. And I really do love that. And there's unforgettable scenes in this game, really unforgettable. And I love that. But what, um, Jesus, I did say everything I said here, art said everything here, so that's amazing. Um, so I guess that's all I have to say about this game. For every single game that may be called weak, there's always a game that, in my opinion, is always called perfect. And Season 2, finale, is perfect. It's a perfect game. So let's just go over a few things that I have to say before I, I wrap this up in a jiffy. So, what's the first thing that's good is the animation, the voice acting, and the writing. Two of the best parts of this game come together and they make a great experience. Number three is also that the gameplay, while simple, which I must talk a little bit more is that you're not really doing that much in the game. A lot of people are just sitting here watching more than playing. But you are playing while you're watching. So it's kind of like Heavy Rain. This is what Heavy Rain started. And, Heavy Rain, and this is continued by Heavy Rain in my opinion. I love Heavy Rain. And I love this game. So it's amazing to see that. It, I love a game that where if they make me watch, I have to be playing a compelling story. A compelling story which is really pulls me into. And this game pulls you in right away with its cinematic moments and its dark storytelling. It's amazing how they do it here. And I love that because of it. 
Um, tone of storytelling is amazing. Visually, it looks beautiful. It's such a good look, and its texture is looking a lot better this season one. I love how it's a big improvement on the last season. Um, music, like I said, is good. Sound design when it comes to like shoots or like when you're breaking glass or windows or ice, it's amazing how they really did do it well. This is like basically some of the best sound design since like the last finale, which is on season one finale of Walking Dead. It was amazing sound design that they did here. I love that because of it. Um, the endings, like I said, they're always going to be something in my heart that I'm never going to forget, and I love that because of it. So overall, what is this game getting? Well, everyone knows this, because it said at the beginning, it's a masterpiece. It's a 10 out of 10. It's a legendary game, in my opinion. If you don't see the reason of value in this 25, 20 to $25 game altogether this second season, then you are a dead walker. You basically have no reason of why you play the game. This is a way to tell a story the best way possible. This is how you do a good storytelling. Okay? This is like great storytelling. This is like uh, great characters that you care about, characters that you want to know about and learn. Um, story gameplay that's simple but not boring. It's amazing how they do it here. It's amazing. Overall, I recommend this as a full purchase. And, I, and I'm saying this right now. Season 2 of The Walking Dead is officially my game of the year. Damn to calling it that. It's my game of the year. Nothing else beats it. So, guys, please like this video. Comment below. If you do rate, then rate it. And subscribe. Also, follow me on Facebook and Twitter. My name on Facebook is Michael Martinez. My name on Twitter is the Michael Lund, 1987. Please check me out on that on the link. Um, not the links, but the names there. So, you can ask me questions and comments. Or, like, or also, give me your reasons. Like, did you like the game? Did it um, rise in expectations? Did it meet your expectations? And what would you give it out of 10? Or did you like it? Did you hate it? It's all up to you guys. So, bye guys. I'll be doing videos in, uh, uh, later. Not today, right now. Actually, other than this video, that's all I'm doing. So, bye guys. See you later.